Welcome to the VolQuest Stock Report on this Yukon week, and it's homecoming, hover. Stock up for me. I'm going to lead us off, and I'm going Dylan Sampson. I mean, he just had a phenomenal fourth quarter. Catching the ball in the backfield, running the football tough, showing balance, showing power, um, showing speed. Uh, continues to find his footing in the running game. So for me, I'm going to go stock up Dylan Sampson. Stock up for you. Yeah, I'm, listen, I'm going to go with the quarterback, right? He's been stock up. He's been stocked down. He's been stock stagnant. The quarterback, as the coaches always like to say, gets too much credit, too much blame. But I thought Joe Milton was was in complete control of the football game. It had more control of that game than any game he's played as Tennessee's starter. Uh, I thought his first scramble was a huge play in the game to get him settled in, as you talked to Joey Halsley about on Tuesday, how important it is kind of for him to get that first collision his run at the end for the first down to put the game away was a huge play. And in between, he made plays off schedule. He made plays uh, scrambling, throwing on the run, things we've not seen out of Joe Milton. He did a really nice job of. I, I thought he played terrific against that Kentucky defense. Stock down for me. I'm going to go Tennessee secondary. I mean, how's it not? They're a little bit banged up. Uh, they gave up a, a ton of cushion yardage against Kentucky. Devin Leary came into the game uh, – doing little to nothing, and, you know, I mean, he looked like uh, Joe Montana out there um, on Saturday. So, you know, let's see if they can bounce back next week. I don't, this week I don't think it's a real, you know, barometer test, but uh, we'll see if they can bounce back next week against a, you know, very formidable Missouri passing game. Now, with that said, you could also say stock down D-line because their pass rush just didn't get home, but I do think some of that was a lack of holding calls because they were, you know, held all night long. So, We'll see if that changes next week. But for me right now, it's stock down secondary for the week. Stock down for you. Yeah, I'm going to go a little more specific because I think the secondary in general, but I'm going to go middle of the field defense. I think part of that was because Tennessee committed so hard to stop Ray Davis. Linebackers were probably a little closer to the line of scrimmage and secondary and the safeties were playing some run fits. But man, when, when Kentucky went empty, uh, I don't think Tennessee adjusts very well in the middle of the field. I think their linebacker drops were suspect. I think they're too soft at the safety coverage. I mean, Devin Leary was 15 of 17 for 204 yards between the hashes, between the middle of the field. That's got to have Eli Drinkowitz, and that's got to have Mike Bobo licking their chops when they look at that tape. Tennessee's going to have to tighten it up and clean it up in the middle of the field. A pass rush certainly would help change that a lot. Stock stagnant for me it is going to be, you know, as simple as, as this, Tennessee's ability to get nine or ten wins. Um, you know, still got to win one more between Tennessee or between Georgia and, and Missouri to get to nine, both of them to, the, them to get to ten. If Tennessee can just win one more out of those two, they'll have done something in back-to-back -back years that they've not done since 2007, which is win more than eight games in the regular season. They never did it all these years until last year. They got to ten in the regular season plus a, one in the bowl game, which got to 11. You can win one of the next two after this week. You're going to get to at least nine, which would be nine and three at worst. And that's a huge step in the right direction in back-to-back -back years under Josh Heupel with a team that's not nearly as talented as they were a year ago. So to me, it's still stock stagnant on whether they get to nine, but uh, they've definitely put themselves in position to to get there, which I think is a huge uh, which huge step in the right direction. Obviously, last year was a huge leap, but to do it back-to-back, -back, I think, would be really, really good. Stock stagnant for you. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm going to pick a guy who had his best day in a vol uniform, so I guess that makes me a negative Nancy, right, in, in a stunning development, AP. But I'm going Dante Thornton. Listen, Dante Thornton had three catches for 63 yards. He looked much more comfortable outside as a receiver instead of an inside slot guy. But what does it truly mean? Does that mean that he's really they've really found something with Thornton and, and he's really, quote, arrived, if you will? I don't know. I mean, I think time will tell, but I think it was a move in the right direction. But before he's anointed anything, I, I think you got to wait and see it back to back weeks. You got to see how he plays uh, and how he grows in that position. I thought he blocked well. I thought he caught the ball well. I thought he played faster. All the things you wanted to see out there. Now, just can he become a consistent player out there? We're heading into homecoming we cover. Are you stock up, stock down, or stock stagnant, the Tennessee walking horse? Go. Do we, you mean, do I like it? Yeah. Are you, a big, I, I, are you a Tennessee walking horse guy? I'm fine with it once a year. I mean, I don't think people pay that much attention to it. I mean, so, you know, you brought back. A Eric Berry paid attention to it. Yeah, Eric Berry did because he doesn't like horses. But <laughs> I, I, mean, I think it's one of those deals where, 
it, it happens so early in the pregame that a lot of people don't even recognize it. People are still trying to get in the stadium. So sure. it, I, I get it's a tradition, but I don't think it's one that a lot of people pay a whole lot of attention to. So I guess I'm stock stagnant on the walking horse. If it weren't there, most people wouldn't notice it. Um, it's, I'm not stocked down that the horse is there. How's that? How's that for your stock report, AP? Yeah, you're such a positive guy. Well, such I'll great. say this. I'm, I am stocked down on a Halloween Christmas tree or a, an October Christmas tree. So I'm it's going not. It's down. November, Hubs. It's November 1. You had that tree up before this thing was was taking place on on November 1st. So you didn't I put literally that popped it out right before we started this. <laughs> yeah. Sure you did. <laughs> Mariah Carey is playing through the house, Bean Crosby. I mean, it's. You've got, you got Alvin and the Chipmunks Christmas up going going this morning, right? No, listen, Alvin, Simon, and Theodore, they'll be on the sideline on Saturday <laughs> in front of the black things. I, yeah, I never even knew that existed. I never knew that. My wife's like, how did you not know this? And I'm like, because I don't look on TikTok, and I didn't even know that was a thing. And th this week, my eyes have been open. Now I can't unsee it, all right? I mean, like, it's, it's fantastic. My kids think it's outstanding because, you know, they love the Chipmunks, so – there you go. Josh Heupel and the Chipmunks. Does that make him Dave? Oh, 100%. He's Dave Seville. Dave. I may ask him that Thursday at the media availability. Coach, <laughs> your, your, your thoughts on being Dave Seville? He'll go, what? <laughs> He'll have no idea. And everybody will be going, really? Is that what we're doing this morning? There's nothing else to ask on a Thursday because he's not going to offer anything up, right? I don't know. You're exactly right. But inevitably, a few people will ask some nonsense questions to get the the total number of time to four minutes and 23 seconds. Kind of like how we're procrastinating here to see if we can get a second ad on this YouTube <laughs> on the stock report. Not really. He is Brent Hubs. I'm Austin Price for the Volquist Stock Report for this Yukon Week.